emergency. It was February 1st. It seemed like a normal day. I got up early, got ready. I'm a school administrator, so I had a lot of meetings scheduled. Drove about 40 minutes to our regional office of education. Walked in, went to the conference room where our meeting was gonna be held. A couple other people were already there, getting ready, getting set up. And I took a breath and I felt super dizzy. And then I collapsed. I get a phone call from a number I didn't recognize and it's a colleague of Heather's. She says she collapsed, she wasn't responsive. We had to give her CPR and actually shock her with the AED. She hit her head against the table, fell on the floor and rolled onto her back. Bill started the hands-only CPR, 911 was on their way. That's where Tim came in. I had to shock her three times. I'm gonna tell you that I had this part of me saying that I'm not, I'm not gonna let her die. It really all happened so fast. The first person I called was her mom. I started immediately crying. If you had to do CPR, that means your heart stopped. After what felt like forever, a doctor came in and they said, well, because they had to use the AED, they're fairly certain it was cardiac arrest. You know, right there when you see her intubated with the tube down her throat, it was definitely something that you don't ever want to see. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely scary. I walked into the hospital. Paul was standing there and he said, she's on life support. I remember screaming out in the lobby, I can't go through this again. I lost my mother and my father to this. I cannot lose my daughter to this. When I got to the hospital, they placed me in a medically induced coma and I was on a ventilator. I had all the tubes in all of the places. By the end of the day, I wasn't waking up. So they told my family that because I had lost so much oxygen to the brain over the 10 to 12 minutes of the incident, I might not walk or talk again on my own. You know, you live every day to the fullest because in the blink of an eye, your life could be over. And to me, that is what happened. The worst part was leaving her that first night when she was still medically induced and hooked up to all the machines, not knowing what the future looks like was extremely scary for me. To be 28 years old and to find out you went into cardiac arrest is surreal. From the time I was born, I was a very energetic kid. So I think the most surprising thing about this experience to me was that I was healthy. She played sports, she was a softball player, a cheerleader, and everything seemed fine. I was exercising, I was staying active, I was going to doctors regularly, I was eating healthy. I never suspected something would happen to my heart. That next morning, I got a phone call from the hospital, and they say, hey, we got Heather up, she's responding. It was one of the best feelings that, you know, I could ask for at that point. Their guess is that my potassium levels in my body had gotten really, really low. So there's a condition called long QT syndrome in which your long beats are too long, and my short beat hit at the same time, which put my heart into an electrical frenzy. It just basically shorted a fuse but because they were able to keep blood and oxygen circulating through my body and up to my brain, I was able to, to regain um, my life. Heather's electrophysiologist, which is her heart doctor, said that only 9% of people survive this and less than 1% survive with no brain damage at all. I don't remember those first couple of days but then I got transferred to another hospital where they decided to give me a subcutaneous defibrillator so that in case this happens again, it'll be able to shock my heart. It took me quite a while to feel better, for my wounds to heal. This device will only last about seven years and then we will need to replace it. And when I think about having to do that again in seven years, 
it really bothers me and um, worries me. But I think it wasn't until weeks and maybe even months later that I really started to understand the gravity of what had happened and how lucky I truly was, and then also how strong my body was too. After experiencing cardiac arrest, I feel like I was truly reborn and given a second chance at life. Heather was saved because her coworkers jumped in immediately and gave her CPR. And I know her life has changed and now this is her new normal, but she also has an opportunity here now to educate people and she's an educator. One of my last days in the hospital, one of my cardiologists looked at me and said, Heather, most people do not survive this. And most people are not this young. Most people don't like to talk as much as you. And he said, please, please, please share your story. And I started looking for organizations that I could reach out to. And the first one that came to my mind, of course, was the American Heart Association. Found that there was a Go Red, Go STEM event. I was able to speak with high school female students about my story. And I got to pass around a device that's similar to mine and then challenging them to say, you become the engineers that make smaller devices. When you donate to the American Heart Association, you're not just donating to an organization or a cause, you're donating to people like me. My hope is that through the research that's being done, engineers will discover smaller, lighter devices. Heather got a second chance at life, and there's no way as a parent there's no words that you could possibly say to the people that saved her. I walked into that building that day, and in the blink of an eye, I was dead. I, we weren't sure if I was gonna live. It really strikes me how lucky I was and how amazing it is that I'm here today. So living every day with no regret is really important. I hope to share that with others too.